So, like we said, we want to discuss about what we do into design. And yeah. um, this video is, is actually being recorded. So, I can we upload it. I, can, I may also share it with you if you need it. And um, so that we may have people that upcoming and startup designers learn from our experience, what we have to say, and how we've, how we've um, passed different obstacles that we've seen as a designer. So that's just what this discussion is about. Yeah, sounds good. All right, great. So you've been into design how long? Um, well, in terms of actually logo design, which is primarily what I'm, I'm doing and kind of publicizing, okay. only a couple of years probably. Tim Donatus is here, yeah? Um, hi Donatus. Hi Donatus. I think it's connecting his audio, isn't it? Yeah, it's connecting his audio. All right, you can you can speak on. Maybe he will join us. Yeah. So, um, logo design primarily probably two years now, but before that, I've been working doing illustration, uh, all sorts of things. I actually work as a surgeon. Okay. But do design as like my second job, I guess. All right. I also see some artwork on your page. Yeah. You do you do them? Yeah, 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 yeah. They are really great, really great. Thanks. Thank you, my friend. Hi, Donatus. Hi, good afternoon. Yeah. Afternoon. It's or actually you... afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, evening. How are you doing? Very well, very well. Nice to be here. Yeah, same. Nice to connect with you. How is the Islam celebration going over there? <laughs> well, here in Lagos, it's it's been rain since morning. With no Seriously, rain. wow, wow! Serious rain, like non-stop. Even right now, it's still raining around. Wow. Yeah. All right. So, so great. Just before you joined in, like um, we just wanted to discuss. The discussion is about we discussing our experience. Okay. Our experience so that maybe other designers and startup designers can learn from how we've overcome some certain obstacles we had over the years in in line of yeah. design. So that was what we were just discussing before you joined us. Okay. All right. Okay. I believe so. We should just shoot into it now. Let's just begin. This video is being recorded, actually. Okay. Yeah. So um let's just begin the discussion by saying maybe the first thing i want us to talk about is um most designers are always very busy very busy from designing this to designing that how do you like um how do you combine work and life work life balance the way they call it maybe newman will go first will you have you call you newman or thomas yeah both fine thomas is good um well, I think it's different for every designer because we've all got certain things in our lives that are important to us, whether that's family or other work or other, you know, responsibilities. So it's about prioritizing what's important for you. Yeah. Um, if your main income stream is your design work, then you need to make sure that you are making it work so that you can support your family, support your other interests. So it's about understanding that if, if there's a spell in time where it's not going so well, you may need to focus more on that, spend a little bit more time on that and yeah. drop some things that you may consider to be a lower priority. All right. That's, that's, that's really nice. I think some people normally say leave work at the workplace mm. and when you're at home, be with your family. Or when you're at work, leave your family and be at work to fully focus but i think lots of designers are really focusing on work maybe yeah. at the startup level and then they just forget every other thing they just yeah, yeah. forget lots of every other thing i don't know how would you say you handle it donatus the work life well 
it's to be honest, it's uh, it has been a, a, a very big issue around here, yeah. especially for we that are very young in the industry. Yeah. Okay, so I started designing like um, 2018, but I started doing it professionally last year. So to be honest, I've not had time to balance work and other things. Sometimes some of my friends will tell me, ah, guy, every time design, design, morning design, <laughs> and do I work is, do I work is, I literally design from 8 a.m. to like 12, 1, oh, 2. Wow. Yes, you know, I think I sleep around 3. Wow. So it's been a routine. It's been a routine. I used to tell my friends that, see, if you're a young designer, forget relationship first. Of mm. course. <laughs> but, but that is not that is not the best advice. I wouldn't advise anybody to do that because, okay. of course, you have to find balance so that you won't burn out. Okay. Yeah. So for, for us to be that, um, for us to create that balance between work, things we do, and um, other things that makes life interesting, yeah. it's just we have to make it. I, I usually make a decision that um, Sundays, some Sundays, I don't touch system. Okay. Wow. Yeah. I say this day is my <laughs> resting day. So what I do is I read books. I you know, watch movies. I do that thing that is not design related. Okay. Right. So, and I want to inculcate that. Also, I also want to add, I thought it's already, but it's not consistent. I also okay. want to add, let's say, from certain time to certain time, I'll put off my system, rest. Okay. Because I discovered that when you do that, you have a more refreshed mind. Like, yeah. you become more creative. Like sometimes when I'm working and there's this creative block, I usually take some time off. The rest, I, yeah. Exactly. yeah, I put off everything and I just rest. Exactly. So that works for me. I think I think it's the same thing for, for lots of designers now. Every time working from yeah. more sun up to sundown, always working. I think it is, it is. And just the way you said it, you take one day off. Sundays. Yeah. You know, there are some days you want to take off and then a client just called you. A like, client called. <laughs> do this and do that. All right. So let's just go into um, the next discussion now. Dealing with clients. We're dealing with clients. Okay. I think I'm in a different part of the country. You're in a different part of the country also. And Thomas is from um, London. Would you say, would you say startup business owners, do they value branding? Do they value branding and are they ready to pay for what it was? Thomas? Um, well, I think it, it depends where the startup's coming from because it's normally an individual. It's normally a one person or a small group of people. So it depends whether it's the first time they've ever done this or yeah. whether they've done it before. If it's the first time, sometimes they don't understand um, the impact adequate branding can have yeah I'd say it's harder for someone where it's their first business to understand how useful that can be and therefore be surprised at the cost of higher level logo design higher level branding and the fact that it doesn't just stop there it's websites it's online stuff it's social media assets and I think part of our job is explaining to them to try and help the client understand what's going to help them yeah exactly yeah i do that a lot 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 i have to explain to the clients i have to tell them this is how it goes see the benefit of it and before now they don't really understand the value of branding and so they think maybe it's 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 supposed to be charged lesser than it actually is because they don't really understand the value but then when you lecture them and then tell them this is where branding can take you this is example of companies that have been successful in branding. Yeah. And this is how you can do it. I think that's when they now understand the value for people that are just starting up. For people yeah, that are I, agree. Starting up. I agree. So what is your experience, Donatus? I don't know. Maybe you have something a bit different. Dealing with cry, uh, client, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is my approach to clients. Of course, we should know that not all clients are the same. Exactly. Um, not all clients are the same. I there are some there are some that can actually afford it. There are some that are just starting up and they just need help most of the time. But then um, it's 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 wiser for we designers to know um, first of all to segment which is we want to serve. I I think that's actually how I approach it. Exactly. Um, I I have a segment of um, clientele I want to work for. 
okay and then i have my price range also so how i approach it is it depends i i i, I usually send out questionnaires so from the responses i get from the client i engage them in a consulting session where i clarify them on most of these things i tell them okay this is what is necessary this is what is necessary so it's going to cost you but they'll be like oh is there no way we can um is there no discount i say okay if you want discount i'm going to take this <laughs> off for, for instance yes for instance if i'm supposed to do a full brand identity guide for you and you say i mean i can't afford um just amounts of money for full brand identity guide i said okay don't worry i'll do just logo and let's say business card or logo and later head and that will be it all right yeah, yeah. so i after the inter after that question yeah I usually engage them on the conversation and then we have this um agreement and understanding of what it is you're doing because without that it's going to be very stressful it's yeah. going to you're just going to be working and it's not just about serving a whole lot of persons it's about making sure that you serve the right kind of person and there's that mutual understanding between you and your clients yes, exactly. so and i just need to point this out you need to know that um some clients are from pit of hell okay <laughs> Yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly this part out. of the world. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if it's like that in your own country, but here in Nigeria, come on, there is exactly. some guys that that won't agree, and most of them are those guys that pay you very. They pay you very little, they pay, yeah, they and they will bring the biggest problem. Exactly, uh, they will bring the review upon look. review upon review. So, also that that I also do to help me is to set um some principles and guidelines which i show them for example this logo we only do like two or three revisions on this logo anything above two or three revision, uh, revisions you are going to pay extra money yeah. uh, also um if i'm doing samples for you i don't do more than two samples all right mm. if i do my brand strategy work very well behind the scene i shouldn't be able to do exactly. beyond two samples yeah, exactly. that should work for you so all these things help me manage them better and understand i think it's the framework so is, is the framework every yeah. is supposed to have yeah it's a framework yeah. every so that's, you have your own system and then how you interact with them and then you understand exactly. all of that but another problem yeah. i think we have here i don't know me um thomas do you we see the design industry is like saturated there are lots of designers mm. there are lots of designers yeah i don't know how it is over there thomas maybe there are lots of designers also but then i know there are lots of designers worldwide also on fiverr and upwork you have lots of competitors yeah so how how can we really stand out as designers how can we really stand out and not lost in the multitude of lots of designers I think I mean it's a good question and and one way to think of it is do you need to stand out by doing something particular or do you just stand out by doing good work and making sure that when you are doing the work whoever you're working with that you're making it a really enjoyable process for them yeah because actually word of mouth business is is one of the ways in which I get more work is that because people have enjoyed the work with me, me too. they tell their friend, they yeah. tell their brother, they tell their auntie, they tell whoever. That's, for me, really important that whoever I'm working with has an enjoyable experience and, and maybe gets more than they expect. Yeah. And I think, I think, uh, I don't think you necessarily have to stand out because although there are lots of designers, there are a lot of people looking for designs. Mm -hmm. if you make sure what you're doing is good it doesn't have to be anything different or super special it just needs to be really good quality yeah. and your interactions with people has to be good quality interactions yeah i think i was having a i was having a designer discussion the last one we were having and uh, the designer said graphic designers are only much at the startup level yeah yeah I they are less, they are less, they are less much at the startup level but then when you see professional yeah, designers professional designers are not that much people that really exactly. know what they're doing exactly. people that really, know, people that really that. know what they're doing so they're not that much so i don't know how do you handle it but then we still have competitors anyway yeah. just the way yeah. thomas yeah. said it, we may stand out by doing exceptional work or we may stand out by doing something different so how do you how do you approach it uh, donatio 
All right, this is, a, this is actually a very interesting question because um, over the years, especially during the lockdown, you notice that there is this outburst of online and virtual jobs and everybody. It's now very easy to become a designer, especially in this part of the world. I've seen guys who organize WhatsApp classes and teach graphic design in two weeks and they, are, they have over 200 students and these guys are out in the field. Almost everybody is a right. designer. But I'm telling you, but I keep telling people that um the design industry is not saturated and i know why i'm saying so mm -hmm. i know why i'm saying so the design industry is not as saturated as it looks on the surface if you come in if you come into the industry like if you penetrate into the industry you find out that ah, this thing we are doing is just um on the outside let me give you let me give you this instance um I started doing design professionally last year. Like I've been doing design before, but I chose to do it professionally last year. And then with the way I have grown, with my level of growth, I find out that there are even more demand of professional designers. Yeah. Like the more requests, the requests for professional designers are too high. Especially here in Nigeria, that you can't even measure it up with the, the amount of startups. Professional designers are around. You understand? Yes. So what I'm saying is that there is no competition. So if any designer wants to stand out, then you have to determine to be, to, to, to you know, take your game to the next level, all right? Yes. Take your yes. game to the next level. Put, your, put yourself in that place where people look at you and say, ah, there are many designers, but this guy is, is, is very, very peculiar. This guy is different from the rest. So that is just define what it is you want to serve. And just the same way that there are lots of, there are lots of um, 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 guys doing design right now. That is also the same way that there are a lot of things you can do as a designer. Yeah. There is there a lot of things you can do as a designer, a lot of different aspects. I think it's one, of the fear, it's one of the fear that startup designers have because they, yeah. fear that, they fear that if they commit into design, into the design industry, okay. they may miss out in yeah. any other industry. Yeah. So I think it was a fear that I had before. I didn't want to commit to the design industry, so I won't miss out on any other industry because I know the design. If, you, if I actually wanted to commit, I had to go all in and then maybe forego yeah. any other alternative. That is. I think it comes into play. It comes into it comes into play when we're talking about when when you're choosing your career, when choosing yeah. a career. Yeah. So um, yeah. If you're going into the design industry, you need to be ready to commit. And that, that is what that is just it. That is just they, I did something last year. I did something before last year. Like I was working as a banker before. I was working with one of the top banks in Nigeria as one of their account officers. And then at the point I told myself, guys, okay, let's do this design thing. Like I've made money during 2020 lockdown. It was design that did a lot of magic for me financially. So I told myself, since this thing can actually put one or two on the table, why not go into it full time? Do you know what I did? I resigned from my job. I wow. took design full time and I went all in. Mm -hmm. So when I went all in, I said, ah, there's actually too much space at the top. That is all the truth. There is yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. space at the top. So if any beginner design wants to scale up, then go all in. There's opportunities here. Yeah. You can work as a brand strategist. You can work as a consultant. You can work in the advertising industry. You can work in printing and publishing. You can I do 3D models. There's a lot of things is for the, you. To is, do. The, is the confidence mm. that lots of people lack to commit? Yeah. To start off. Yeah. So, um, Thomas, I don't know if if you are to start all over again, if you are to start <laughs> design all over again, which which area, which aspect would you focus on more? Um, well, I, I, I really like what I, I like logo design. I find that incredibly interesting yeah. and, and uh, wow. I like the flexibility of working with different companies. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I'd necessarily change anything specific. Um, I think the one thing I would love to do if I had more time mm -hmm. was develop some of my animation skills. All right. I think animation is going to become or already is very important with yeah. most of these being almost solely online now. Yeah. I think it's based on what you just said now, I am, I'm a designer that believes in, I think this has been one, one, one very important discussion in the design industry, where we are talking about niching down to a particular yeah. set of skills or being yeah. a generalist. 
some designers are generalists and some are niched down to maybe one or two skills and then they become very good at it. So if you are to advise, what would you really advise? Would you really advise us to niche down to a particular one and then become the expert at it or to stand and be like a general designer? Um, I don't think there's a right answer. I think it depends on okay. the person. You <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it depends. It depends on your per who you are, what's important to you, what because the, the most important thing is if you don't enjoy it, you're not going to get anywhere. Yeah, it's true. Because yeah. you're not going to spend the time on it. You're not going to work on it. So if needing down for you is boring, you can't do it. So don't do it. Yeah. But if true. you if you really like being doing one thing and be very specific and good at it. That's how. That's what you got to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. For me, like for me, um, when I began to niche down, I began to find. I got into graphic design. I was doing everything: logo, flyer, video, even web design. But then I began to find certain. I was better at logo design. I was less. I was when I go whenever I got flyer design, flyer to design, it stressed me out. Understand? I don't really enjoy the process of designing flyer like I do for logo. So that was part of the thing that made me niche down. And I see a lot of designers that they are generalists and they are still also great at doing what they do, but then they are generalists and then they can handle several other aspects. Yeah. So what would you say, Donald, to, to that? This, this, is one, this is one of the most interesting questions you've asked. Yeah, yeah. To be honest, I've, I'm actually a generalist. Oh, wow. Yes, full-time. I'm a full-time generalist. Yeah, because... I work as a design instructor also around mm. here on front of the design academy here. So, oh, wow. uh, well, what I would say is it depends on you, just like Newman mentioned, it depends on the person and what the person wants. So you as a designer, um, where do you sure, uh, where do you see yourself to be, let's say in 10 to 15 years time? And then what is required? Just like Newman also suggested, um, if you start from doing logo design, Mm -hmm. And then you study the market and you find out that in the next five to 15 years, five to five to 10 years, animation is going to be the in thing. Then you have to stack your skill, right? There's what is called, uh, you already know that it's what is called skill stacking. So yeah. if you stack your skill, the truth is that you're going to be more valuable in the market than yeah. somebody who just say, okay, I do only logo, I do only logo. So what if there's no logo design request? What if there are just animation requests? How are you going to fend for yourself yeah. so to avoid being frustrated why you get good let's say 80 percent good at a particular skill mm -hmm. try to learn another one to another stack one. the skills so that when people come to you right now i can do ui ux very well very oh, wow. very well i can do logo very well flyers i'm in magazine i'm it's like i'm everywhere you understand and that actually mm -hmm. made me there was this client i was working for the other time so she contacted me for a logo design after i finished i said okay so aren't you not going to do um brochures for this i said can you, i said i can do brochures they do it i thought we're done with that i said don't you think we need a website see ah i don't have to go about it i said i'll start with the ui i built that for the ui everything and she was like wow so you can i said yeah i have to so my She's not placed me somewhere in her head that this guy is just there. But yeah. it's not an easy thing to do. It's not an easy thing to do. If you know you can't, if you know you can't just um, niche down. carry it, just niche down, stay one yeah. place. But it's, yeah. if you ask me, if you want to build authority, if you want to build authority, then niching down is one of the things you can do. Mm -hmm. But um, if you want to increase your opportunities, in the market, if you want to increase your opportunities in the market, then being a generalist is something you should consider. Yes, so yes. Both of them, anyone can do <laughs> naturally. So if I'm to start all over, if I'm to start all over, I'll start. Um, I'll start from getting design knowledge first, getting okay. the right kind of design knowledge. In this part of the world, that's very scarce. You really get where they teach you design that's for true. what design is. That's so true. most that's people true. actually rely on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I think it's, it's uh, also speaking on um, if you want to build authority or if you want to be a generalist or niche down. Yeah. So me that I have um, niche down now, I very much believe in okay. also teaming up with other designers. 
that do yeah. other things, other aspects like flyer, website, yeah. or whatever. So whatever I cannot do, I have a team, and then this person can handle this aspect, this other person can handle this aspect, and then we maximize, we maximize profit. We maximize profit. Wow, that's that's smart. Very yeah. smart move. Is I also believe in teaming up. I think that teaming up, yeah, lots of designers are just freelancers, and then it's killing them because they have to do every aspect. They have to Everything. do designing. They have to do designing, yeah. social media. They have to do marketing and every other thing. And it's that's, when you grow, when draining. you grow, everything is yeah, it's draining. It's frustrating. So that's I believe draining. in teaming that's up a lot. I believe in teaming up with yeah. other people, and then being able to. So one of that, one of that very important discussion I wanted to discuss. I think I sent it to you guys. Was the yeah. rebrand, yeah. the, re- the recent rebrand going on with um this top tech, top tech industries and this top tech. You, I think you check it out. Yeah, Thomas. I did. Thomas, yeah, you check yeah, it yeah. out. So yeah. I think you must have noticed, right? Like all these top tech industries and this fashion industry, they were making rebrands to, and their logos were looking more simple, more yeah. basic, yeah. more yeah. Yeah, sans serif. So what would you say is their reason? I don't know for for doing those rebrands and then making coming off as very very simple. I think um, if you, if you but if you break down what makes up a good logo, yeah. one of the key aspects is that it is as simple as it can be mm-hmm. without losing something. Yeah. Now a lot of these companies seem to be making what they've got simpler, but retaining the feel and the character of the original logo. But yeah. I think that's what they're going for, and it might be part of that might be because. We're requiring logos to be smaller and smaller. If you think about a favicon on a website or just on an app, you need some identifiable mark or word or letter that is very small. But perhaps it's just making it um, more appropriate for online use. Maybe that's the reason. I don't think in simplifying a logo is always better, though. I think a lot of the rebrands have been good. I think there are probably examples where you wonder whether it's lost a little bit of what made it really nice before. But yeah. just to see what the nice thinks. Yeah. So I think there has been a recent rebrand in the tech industry here also in Nigeria, in Africa, yeah. actually. And then yeah. I think yeah. the MTN on MTN, yeah? Yes. So I think yes, they did they that. They did, they did that because they wanted to expand into other things, and then right, they wanted right, their right. logos. Yeah. They wanted their logo to be open to accept variety variety of um sectors they are going into. I think it was yeah, part okay. of the thing. They lo- their logo should be um to be versatile. This is one of the quality of a logo having a versatile logo that can um yeah. that can serve as across different sectors. Yeah, 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 that's what I see. Then yeah. I also see the importance you talked about, Thomas. You talked about the importance of having a simple logo, which makes it more memorable. Yeah, makes it more memorable. That's just it. Yeah, so these are like the major things I have made research, and these are like the major things. I, I don't do you have anything to say, Donato, about them? About yeah, them? yeah, yeah. The truth is, um there's there's um there's this there's this i don't want to call it trend it's not a trend but there's this thing about logo design that i love so much okay uh, and that is um seeing a simple logo personally i love looking at simple logos personally i don't know if everyone is like me yeah, yeah i love yeah. looking at simple logos. simple logos i used to tell my i used to tell my students that one of the things i used to test my logo is when I finish designing a logo and I show it to you and I take it off your face, let's say in two seconds or three seconds or um, at the time they permit, then I'll ask you, please, this logo I just showed you, can you help me sketch it out anyhow? Okay. 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 If you can successfully sketch it out, it's one of the ways I rate my logo as what is going to work. All right. So I believe that, um, and with the introduction of, with the introduction of, um, Metaverse, if you understand, uh, Mark Zuckerberg talked about Metaverse some time ago, and almost everybody is buying into that. And then you notice that there is this, there is this large, um, there is this um, information everywhere on the internet. So people's attention span is 
reducing by the day. Like everybody's dragging for attention. So to stand out, you have to make your logo very simple. Yeah. as simple as you can make it so that people can look at it who can remember that this is actually mtn's this is actually sony this is actually samsung or exactly. this is actually um santander and most of those brands so the most simpler the logo is the, the more, more it's easy for us to remember it yeah and then the everybody's impact. going into tech almost everybody's going into tech right now yeah so I think that's the reason for that rebrand. Everybody's shifting from that's a very the traditional way of doing logos to um, simple modern logos. way of doing logos. Simple logos. Yeah. And then to help maintain top of mind awareness. If it's simple, it's easily memorable, and then it helps maintain exactly. that top of mind awareness. All right. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, there's a question I sent to you, Thomas. I was like asking, I observed lots of logos designed in, in London, lots of London logo designers always make their logos look simple. Their logos <laughs> always make their logos, sorry, um, modern. They always yeah, design yeah. a modern logo. Yeah, so does it have a market um, significance or a designer, designer just love designing modern logos? there in london because the other logos i think if you go towards asia they love designing their logos to look traditional traditional, logos, yeah, yeah, traditional yeah. Logo. so and then i studied london also and london uk they have their logos looking more modern yeah mostly modern so does it have a market significance or is it just designed to look like that because that is what the designers understand i think um it, it's a tricky one to answer but i think mm-hmm. Maybe a simple answer is that there's more, there are more, there are more companies where a simple and modern logo is appropriate than a traditional logo. Okay. So if you're thinking about when would a more traditional or complicated logo work, it might be for like a very historic institution. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I agree with that they're becoming fewer and fewer because we're not we're not having. When all the companies that are coming out now, which are hundreds and thousands every day because it's easier now and people can do online businesses, yeah. you're going to see a lot of more modern design. And I think also, just for designers in general, like an artist was saying, a lot of us do really like a simple design that works. Yeah. I, I like illustrating things as well. So an illustrated logo, I think, has its place and can look really nice, but actually there's something really special about a very simple beautiful logo i think we enjoy doing it as well so maybe that's one of the reasons yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, i think it, it, it's a lot of work to take the brand brief to take information about the clients a company and then transform it into a simple logo yeah you may not really know the process it takes to convert that transform yeah. all the brand brief into a simple logo and it has to be relevant it still has yeah, to be yeah. relevant. I think it's still a lot of work, but then simple logo does the job. Simple modern exactly. logo, it does the job. All right. So exactly. I think this is the end of our. I don't know if anybody wants to chip in anything at all. Thomas Donatus. Um, I was, I was going to say, is there is there a simple logo that you really like? Something that is like something you see as if, if you can make a logo as simple as that, then you've done well. You said sorry. Can you can you repeat that again? Are there any examples of really famous simple logo that you just think are absolutely perfect? And if one day you could design a logo like that, I think the one the one mean? the one we designers the one we designers look up to a lot is the one designed by Caroline Davidson, the Nike logo. Nike, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Nike logo. <laughs> Lots it's of so designers simple. love that logo. Like, it's like the simplest logo on planet Earth. <laughs> yeah. And it does it work. Yeah. It does it work. Seriously. The simplest logo on planet Earth, and it does it work. So I yeah. think that's actually that's actually my best logo. In, yeah, like, exactly. Exactly. Best logo is, yeah. And the story, the story was a was very interesting one. I think they said yeah. she went on to keep um illustrating. The owner of Nike said he didn't wow. like it. Then she went back again. She went back and kept illustrating, illustrating. Wow. And wow. then um, wow. when she came back with the last one, she said she couldn't go any further. That she was just paid wow. 
at the five dollars at that time. At five dollars. Yeah. She couldn't go any further. Then the owner just accepted it like that okay. and maybe said maybe it will grow in him. And now I think the logo okay. is like the best in the world. Yeah, yeah. Ah, good answer. It's it's one of the most iconic yeah, logos. Exactly. <laughs> and according to a story I had, I think they they called her back and then they rewarded her with a stock at yeah. that time was more than yeah. six hundred thousand dollars. So wow. it's really a, a success story for 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 her. And I use it yeah, to yeah. motivate. I use it to motivate other designers a lot. That's I used to motivate other designers a lot in my community that when they are designing, they should design, they should design original logos and then they should make it as good as possible. Because yeah. that may be any of us, maybe in a few years from now, any brand you may design for, you don't know how big they may get. So put in all you can exactly. and then design the best logo. I think that's part of my motivation when designing. Yeah. Nice. Wow. Good answer. That's not really interesting. Yeah. Really, really great. So okay, um, mm. I appreciate you, Donatus. I appreciate you, Thompson, for taking out your time. Somebody wants somebody. Somebody's raising up a hand. Just see a message. Somebody wants to contribute okay. something. Who's that? Check the. I think it's Mercy. Okay, that's uh, Hi everyone. Uh, I've been listening to what you've been saying and. Yeah, what you guys said makes sense. Yeah, I just wanted to contribute to one of the Hello, two. Messi. Um, I actually believe that if you're starting in the creative industry, like as a designer, it's always good to explore. So it's always yeah. good to try your hands on different things. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, when you get to that point where you want to carve a niche, like you you have your audience, you know people you want to, you can work with, you know um, mm. what you want to um, focus on, then you can now um, niche down. But I, I actually, because I feel if you if you are starting in the design industry and you are niching, it might uh, hinder you from exploring yeah. because you never can yeah. tell. You never yeah. can tell where you where you fit in. If you don't try something, you won't really know. I've, I've I started as a designer. I went into UI UX. I didn't really have so much, like, I didn't really have good experience in human UX. I love it. I love design generally, but I felt that there were other things I could do better. So I went into, I'm also a social media manager. So, you know, I have um, this analytical part of me. I have analytical skills and all that. So I love creating content too. So I went into social media management. I still design. And, and finally, I dived into brand strategy. Yeah. So I realized that oh, brand strategy even in, um, covers these skills. So it's even a plus for me that I started um, exploring at the early stage. I started like gaining all the knowledge from different fields. So even if I am not, um, I'm not a professional in um, UI UX, but I have an idea. So when I'm working with clients, yeah. when I'm working with a team, because I collaborate a lot. So when I'm working with a team, I know the industry standard. You understand? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it actually yeah. gives give me like an, an edge. So that's what I just wanted to say. And also to stand out uh, in the industry, I feel like you should you should know your audience. Okay. I feel like you should know your audience. Mm -hmm. like you should know the kind of people you can work with. And you also your presentation skill. A lot, a lot of designers do the same thing when they are presenting their work. Like you can't really differentiate. I said, okay, a lot of designers can a lot of people can design, right? We have a lot of really good designers, but they are the same. Well, okay, some people don't even know storytelling. Some people don't even invest in their personal branding. Well, Oh, wow. I think how makes you... it makes uh, it So is how can you get my initiative? There's a way, there's a way the natives will present his work that will be different 